Kenya and uh, my parents came to Kenya from Scotland um, I think in 1938 and luckily they moved from Scotland because if I was brought up in Glasgow I wouldn't know much about what I know now. That's what I do, I'm an artist by profession, sculptor and uh, I got into rally driving because in Africa when you're driving anyway <laughs> you have to drive and then I was enjoyed uh, with a four-wheel drive going quickly, more quicker than other people and then um, that led into the rallying days and, but that's another bit of the story and uh, anyway that's who I am basically. Yeah. It's nearly 40 years yeah. and it's a very interesting and very I suppose a long story um, and you know you have to wonder why and how I'm sitting here in Jürgen's uh, workshop with the car when I, I rallied it for, um, uh, I suppose seriously for two years, but I had it a little bit before that. And uh, there was a friend of uh, Idi Amin in Uganda. He was a little short guy, obviously very wealthy. He had big trucks and their transport, and he wanted to do rally driving. And he kept coming um, to my house when I got the RPM, and he said, I want to buy that car. I want to buy it. It's not for sale. I want to buy it. He kept coming back. Anyway, then I, uh, I thought, well, I wanted to go from the Alpine two years later, and at that time they were bringing the Ford RS2000. So I thought maybe for Africa it may be a good car, so I, I said to him, you can buy it. Well, he came one day, the next day in fact, he paid cash. Um, he had guys with him always with money. And so he paid cash, finished drinking tea, and him and a friend got in the Alpine and to go to Kampala in Uganda, which is a long way, but a good road, tarmac road. And then he had another pickup with uh, uh, a couple of helpers, and they loaded wheels, 20 wheels, spare engine, and all the bits that I had, and they left. Well, I heard that on the way to Kampala, he nearly crashed, because it's fast, mm. and he wasn't a good driver, obviously. So then he, he got to Kampala, and then he did a rally. And in that rally, uh, he crashed it. So he did nothing and uh, in the end he sold it to an Indian man, a Sikh in, uh, man, uh, who rebuilt it. And I gather, I, I heard that, that he was rebuilding it. In fact that guy even sent me a photograph of him rebuilding and it was just terrible. I mean, awful. So I didn't even think about it anymore. And then I heard that this guy took it to Nairobi and that's the last I heard. Mm. So then, um, I think uh, a couple of years ago, maybe a little bit more, I got a, an email from a guy called Jürgen <laughs> and asking me about this car and he said that he knew it was in England. The Indian took it to England, uh, well, whoever it was that had it then, but, um, and he'd been trying to buy the car for a long time and finally got it. And he said, I've got your car in Germany. So I couldn't believe that, but anyway. Um, and he said it was a bit of, uh, needed a bit of work on it. So then, later on, Jürgen started sending me photographs of the process. A nice clean chassis, uh, this done, this done, and slowly, slowly now, comes to an Alpine. Um, and, it, you know, I, as I, I remember very well that when the car came first, I got it, I went to Dieppe in France to buy it, and it was beautiful. Uh, but now it's even better. Um, you know, the car is just phenomenal. So the whole circle now in nearly 40 years to, to go through that and then back now to the car sitting here, you wonder how that happens, why? Yeah. You know, it's a strange thing yeah. and very nice also. And there was a guy in Nairobi who was uh, working for Renault, um, but he was also more working for Alpine. So he knew that I was looking for something else and he started to push about helping. And so um, I thought, yeah, that sounds good. It's got a back engine and, uh, and it's won the World Championship and so on and so on. So I, I bought one. Well, through him I went to, to Dieppe and I got it. Anyway, so um, I, I bought the Alpine and I, I'll never forget when it arrived in Nairobi by air um, in a 747. It was one of those 747s where the nose mm. opens, freight 747. Yeah, the cargo. And I got permission from a guy who knew the customs guys to go at night, because the plane had just arrived, to see 
made me see the car. Well, I didn't, the car was still in the plane, but all the wheels and everything were in, in customs. And then they opened the front of the, uh, the front of the plane, and my, this Alpine was sitting at the front with a nose like that looking up. And so, oh, <laughs> I looked at that, and that was it. The next day I went and collected it, and then we began. So it's a big story to come here. So your Alpine was actually the, the first one that, that the first one intended, the uh, but then very quickly afterwards uh, others came mm. uh, because the the French the work team they also brought uh, some uh, Alpine plater, mm. and they didn't do very well um, because there was a couple of things they did not modify for our condition. Mm. For instance, in the gearbox and uh, the um, bell housing, there's quite a big hole mm -hmm. which they leave open in Europe. Um, for draining uh, mud and yeah. water. <coughs> well, they didn't close it. We did close it. And in the 1976 safari, um, where I think there were three of their cars in the team, three or four, uh, we were hitting sand a lot um, near the coast in Kenya. And so, you know, when you're hitting the bottom of the car a lot on the sand, the sand was going inside the bell housing on their car. And, um, clutch finished yeah. very quickly and so we were lucky because we knew about that and we we didn't have that problem and they probably did wonder why you didn't, exactly. didn't have the same <laughs> issue then exactly okay uh, but there are many stories uh, about the performance of the car as well and one I always remember there's several I wouldn't, I wouldn't bore you with all the stories but uh, some of the rallies in Kenya were uh, traditionally mud events mm. And the one called the Western Kenya Rally was uh, was only five or six hundred kilometers at night, but terrible conditions, mud, mist, rain, uh, for the whole rally. And so, uh, and there was a very long section, very straight, and there was a couple of guys in a Datsun in front, and so we were coming behind them. Uh, we were doing about 160, I suppose, in the mud. And in front, I, could, I was watching them doing this. This is not, this is straight. And they were doing this, and this, and this. So I was waiting and watching, and when they did this, it went past. Anyway, we did the rally, I can't remember. We came second or third. And um, at, the, uh, at the end, when they're doing the prize giving, and the uh, uh, discussion and the debrief about the rally, uh, these guys protested. And you know, protest means you can be disqualified. And they protested at the finish that we were driving on studded tyres because it's not possible to drive straight like that in mud. So I stood up and I said, OK. I said, you can come to my service team. If you find one stud, I would come out of the rain. And um, I mean, you can't remove the studs from tyres. The tyres have to have studs and you see them. So I said, the only other thing we can do is you come with me now, we drive 10 kilometers, it's very near, and we go in that mud. You come with me, and we'll see if you think I had studied tires. So he said, oh, I'm not coming with you. <laughs> <laughs> so he had to withdraw the protest. Yeah. But again, uh, what I'm saying is the performance is, every, every time there were cars stuck somewhere, we went phew, through because of the configuration mm. of the car. You, you obviously have taken part in, in many great rallies with that car and how, how many rallies did, did you do with, with that car? I can't really remember but I think um, it must have been around 15. Mm. You know there's in, in Kenya there's a rally every month and then the safari rally mm. um, and I think probably it was about 15 rallies and um, some we didn't finish because of problems, uh, some we did and um, in all of them we were uh, competing very well and it, it, you always have, it, because service time in those rallies in those days is in the rally. Mm. And so if you have a puncture, you lose time. Um, whereas now on special stage events, all service is yeah. in, at the end of the stage. So you don't lose time. And so it was different. And so um, we, I think our finishes were everything from number two to number 11, depending on what happened you know, in, the, in the event. But I was saying to Jürgen yesterday that um, because the, the, the repairing time is in rally time, your service team and you can be very quick with some things. Uh, we used to change the uh, wheel on this when we had a puncture in one hour, one minute and 40 seconds. 
from the time you stop to the yeah. time you go. That's quick. Which is fairly quick yeah. for two people. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's uh, the performance was amazing and we had a very good time and it, uh, it, it did well. Did you get further assistance from, from uh, the Alpine works team no, or, or were you on your own basically? Completely on my okay. own. And in fact, in, in the couple of times that we wanted something from them, they were not very helpful. Uh, for instance, <coughs> one of the problems with the car in the early days, maybe they've changed it, but uh, the steering rack uh, was very delicate uh, with aluminium casing. I didn't know that. And um, testing the car once, I think we were doing not very fast, but 120, 160 down the track. And the steering broke. We hit a small washaway, which normally wouldn't be a problem. Mm. For some reason, it just got the steering. It went off the road through what was a ditch, but luckily wide and smooth. Mm. Went through the ditch like that, with the steering just nothing. Across the bush, and luckily grass and nothing. Back into the ditch and stopped. And so that was the steering. So nearby was um, a wire fence. So we cut some wire. <laughs> and managed to tie the steering and managed to get back to Nairobi. So then um, I asked the, um, the man in France in charge of the department if we could please have a new steering rack mm. uh, because, you know, this happened and it's a new car and it should, it's still on guarantee. We had to buy it <laughs> and, you know, things like that which were a bit annoying. Um, but anyway, it didn't take away from the, the fun of the car. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> and and if, we, if we would look if you would have to look back at, at one of your most memorable moments with that car, what, what would that be? Wow, well, most memorable, that, that's a good question because there weren't many. Yeah, I can <coughs> uh, But one day um, we were, uh, in a, 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 during the daylight, a long hill we were going down and uh, a big left-hander, or a four left at the bottom. Mm. And there was, in Kenya there were two girls, who the ladies, uh, who, who rallied quite a lot. And um, they were stopped on the side of the road, and as we got near, we were going quite fast, on, and they started doing this. So I, didn't, you know, I, I was looking at the road, and they went on the road, so I couldn't see any major problem, so we just kept going. Well, what happened was, when we got around the corner, literally half of the road was gone. It was probably about uh, three meters uh, ditch from the rain, yeah. and for quite a long distance. And so now you're there, you can do nothing. And so um, I just I put the car on a sideways and we went along like that, sliding with the bottom of the car on the edge, the back wheel was hanging in, and luckily the le left back wheel was just catching. Yeah. And I think not by design, but by just being <laughs> ignorant, I kept my foot on the accelerator. And so the back wheel was doing this and suddenly, poof, jumped onto the road and we kept going. I, I remember that one. Um, but you know, uh, there's so many things that happen and uh, one takes it for granted or at the time. But sometimes when you look back you think, oh, that was uh, interesting. Yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, we, we see all these, uh, all these modifications and, and later on we will go ahead and, and have you point out a, a few details about them. But generally, did you order all these from the factory? Uh, um, no, and we didn't modify very much. Um, but we had, <coughs> uh, for instance, a wing spot on there and a couple of other things which we changed the skid plate on the mm -hmm. back. We didn't make it a big modification, but we changed it slightly better for what we needed. Mm -hmm. um, small things like that and then the jump plate on the back for mud, uh, which we actually never used, but um, it's a useful thing sometimes. Uh, but things like that. But basically, the car is what it is. So it was fit for purpose? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what we were doing is rally driving, enjoying, um, okay, this car, uh, I'd like to get something that's a bit faster, maybe. And, you know, I think it's the same in the Formula One driver. They, you think it's high speed, but then he's thinking just a bit more, a bit more. <laughs> yeah. And it's the same with these. When you begin, you're going very fast in a, a Ford uh, 1600. You know, you think it's fast then, but it's not. And then you go on to Datsun, then you go on to Porsche. And then you want a bit more again in certain conditions, and I, I think it never stops. <laughs> so that's that's how you started off then with with the Ford. Could could you tell us a bit what, about? Yeah, what, what happened with that is very interesting. Um, 
I, in, in Africa, um, I, I, did, I was working a lot with birds and, and animals, obviously. And a Canadian lady who had been on safari with a, a big company in, in Kenya many times, uh, knew that I was doing birds and bats studying. And uh, she actually financed um, an expedition in Madagascar and an expedition in Cameroon for collecting bats. Mm. And I was working on it. And then she asked me if I would drive her to, in Kenya to look at birds. And so during the driving, I had a, a Toyota Land Cruiser, a medium with a trailer. And sometimes we were in very bad conditions. And so uh, I, uh, I was in driving. And one day she said to me, you know, have you ever driven in the safari rally? So I said, no, nah, you know, it's a crazy price, everything. And anyway, again, later in the trip, she said, well, uh, do you want to drive in the safari rally? So I said, yeah, but you know, it's big money. Mm. Anyway, the end of the story was that she said her son in Canada, what his ambition in life was to drive in the safari. Um, and uh, if I did one safari with a friend to learn, she would pay for that and pay for the next year for her son to come. So I told her several times, you're crazy, you know, and you don't know what you're doing and so on. Anyway, at the end of the day, she bought uh, two Ford um, and one practice car for the root, root notes, which is a bit elaborate to do, but mm. we did it. And the other car was prepared by a friend of mine in Nairobi, um, who was a very good engineer for rally. So that was the first year. And, uh, and then the next time we went with Datsun uh, 1600 Triple S, and the sun came, and the condition was by her was that he was never allowed to drive in the mud. He had, he had to navigate, but maybe drive a bit, but never in mud and never at night. Well, the safari rally is nearly <laughs> all in mud and all at night, or a lot. Anyway, he was a really good guy, and he'd never been in a rally car before. And I must say, he was good. Even driving, he was, he was good. But um, anyway, so we did that. So that's how I, I started okay. the rally. And then after that, then it was me and uh, my own crazy head. Und underneath the car here, there's a, there's a protection plate, um, which you can see if you go under. And that, uh, for this car, or any car really, is a very, very, very important point uh, for diving into things or uh, stripping over things. So it's a, a really important protection. And then these lights, um, we, we had them pointing down and out slightly, uh, because when you jump the car, uh, very often you can't see at night what's down below where you're going to land. And so we thought it was a clever idea to have these pointing down so at least you could see and out so you could see if there's a corner immediately after or not. So those are very good and functional points on the car. One of the things which uh, really got us caught out in one of the early rallies was uh, obviously your arms, hands are flying around on the gears and the steering and there's a switch here on the dashboard which uh, when my hand was going around and coming down to the gear stick, uh, somehow my hand flicked forward and I hit the switch on the dashboard. And so uh, that, that turned off. I just did that, but we didn't know what it was and the engine stopped. In the meantime, you're losing you know, a few minutes in the rally uh, while you've tried to work that out. But anyway, that was one of the exciting things that, that happened. and so on and so on and so on to come to here. 
and uh, you, nobody can ever imagine, I, I didn't imagine, what has to go in to make this from what it was when yeah. he got it. And uh, he showed us yesterday all the sequence of photographs all the way through. And in the last couple of years, I didn't see those pictures because I saw them in different stages. But uh, I, I, I said, and it just shows what the passion is of somebody, because I said if I went to look at that car as it was, I, I would have immediately turned around and said bye and leave it. But that's not Jürgen. He, he knew, that, knew what it was, knew what it can be, thankfully. And, uh, and he brought it back here and made this. So <laughs> it's a part of the big circle and fantastic, really. You know, the whole project that he's doing with Alpine, I think, is, is uh, re really incredible. And I think Alpine has been not known all that well, it's known, but as a world classic, it's been pushed aside because of Mercedes, Porsche, mm. and so on and so on. That was at the big car. But I think what's happening now, and I, I think, I feel it'll continue, is this will become a real uh, a piece which people would look at more and more and more. And so these things, uh, people will realize the value um, as, as a car, a collector's piece, or whatever it is. Mm. And it'll come up, it must come up.